Hello, my dear grade 12 students. Welcome to an exciting and thrilling subject, Practical Research 2, intended for senior high school students like you. I am Mom Rosalie Nuheño de la Serna, and I'll be teaching the subject. I can't wait to get to know you guys this year. I know you are all excited to start our class, and so do I. So please stay in your most comfortable position, chill out, smile, and enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lesson 1, Introduction to Quantitative Research. At the end of this module, you are all expected to define quantitative research, describe the different characteristics of quantitative research, determine the strengths and weaknesses of quantitative research, and decide on suitable kinds of quantitative research in various fields of interest. Humans are naturally curious about anything and everything. We always ask questions and test theories about ourselves, others, events, the environment, and the world around us. Research is asking questions and looking for answers to these questions. We are already engaging ourselves into research when we are looking for and into something, when we are comparing and contrasting things when we are searching for more information, and when we are finding what people think and want. The word research was coined from the French word chercheur, which means seek. The prefix re means to repeat. Literally, research is to repeat looking for something. Research signifies finding the truth again about ideas and problems which were in existence before in different perspectives. Research is widely recognized as an important tool for solving man's various problems and in making life more colorful and convenient. The modern gadget that we use today, the medicines that give us relief, the tools and equipment that make our task easier, are all products of researches conducted by professionals from various disciplines. Quantitative research, unlike qualitative research, uses numbers to generalize a particular inquiry based from objective scales of measurements of units called variables. A statistical treatment is utilized to determine how significant the relationships or differences between and among variables. Research findings serve as basis for generalization on certain phenomena. Quantitative research is an objective, systematic, empirical investigation of observable phenomena through the use of computational techniques. It highlights numerical analysis of data, hoping that the number yields unbiased results that can be generalized to some larger population and explain a particular observation. Simply, quantitative research is concerned with numbers and its relationships with events. The characteristics of quantitative research are objective, clearly defined research questions, and structured research instruments. Objective, quantitative research seeks accurate measurement and analysis of target concepts. It is not based on more intuitions and guesses. Data are gathered before proposing a conclusion or solution to a problem. Clearly defined research questions. In quantitative research, the researchers know in advance what they are looking for. The research questions are well defined for which objective answers are sought. All aspects of the study are carefully designed before data are gathered. Structured research instruments. 
Data are normally gathered using structured research tools, such as questionnaires, to collect measurable characteristics of the population, like age, socioeconomic status, number of children, among others. The fourth characteristic of quantitative research is numerical data. Data are in the form of numbers and statistics, often organized and presented using tables, charts, graphs, and figures that consolidate large numbers of data to show trends, relationships, or differences among variables. Large sample sizes. To arrive at a more reliable data analysis, a normal population distribution curve is preferred. This requires a large sample size depending on how the characteristics of the population vary. Random sampling is recommended in determining the sample size to avoid researchers' bias in interpreting the results. Replication Reliable quantitative studies can be repeated to verify or confirm the correctness of the results in another setting. This strengthens the validity of the findings, thus eliminating the possibility of spurious conclusions. The seventh characteristic of quantitative research is future outcomes, and followed by verification of existing facts and develop new concepts. Let's talk about future outcomes. By using complex mathematical calculations and with the aid of computers, if-then scenarios may be formulated, thus predicting future results, verification of existing facts, and develop new concepts. A research can validate an existing fact or may be used to develop new ideas. Let's move on to the strengths of quantitative research. The advantages of quantitative research are, number one, it is objective. Since it provides numerical data, it can't be easily misinterpreted. Number two, the use of statistical techniques facilitates sophisticated analysis and allows you to comprehend a huge amount of vital characteristics of data. Number three, the numerical data can be analyzed in a quick and easy way by employing statistically valid random models findings can be generalized to the population about which information is necessary. Quantitative studies are replicable. Standardized approaches allow the study to be replicated in different areas or over time with the formulation of comparable findings. Moving on, we have the weaknesses of quantitative research. The disadvantages of quantitative research are as follows. Number one, Quantitative research requires a large number of respondents. It is assumed that the larger the sample is, the more statistically accurate the findings are. Number two, it is costly. Since there are more respondents compared to qualitative research, the expenses will be greater in reaching out to these people and in reproducing the questionnaires. Number three, the information contextual factors to help interpret the results or to explain variations are usually ignored. It does not consider the distinct capacity of the respondents to share and elaborate further information, unlike the qualitative research. Number four, many information are difficult to gather using structured research instruments specifically on sensitive issues like premarital sex, domestic violence, among others. Number five, if not done seriously and correctly, data from questionnaires may be incomplete and inaccurate. 
researchers must be on the lookout on respondents who are just guessing in answering the instruments. Next is the kinds of quantitative research. The kind of research is dependent on the researcher's aim in conducting the study and the extent to which the findings will be used. The following are the various kinds of quantitative research that a researcher may employ. Number one, descriptive research. This design is concerned with describing the nature, characteristics, and components of the population or a phenomenon. There is no manipulation of variables or search for cause and effect related to the phenomenon. This design attempts to find general attributes of the presently existing situation and determine the frequency with which it occurs. Here are the examples of descriptive research. Number one, how many hours do senior high school students spend in social media? Second, the number of malnourished students who failed in the achievement test. Third, how healthy is the food served during recess in the public schools? Second kind is the correlational research. It is the systematic investigation of the nature of relationships or associations between and among variables without necessarily investigating into causal reasons underlying them. It is also concerned with the extent of relationships that exist between or among the variables. Examples of correlational research are using the pre-board examination results, predict the performance in the licensure examination for teachers or let. Relationship of sex and mathematical ability in the relationship of marriage and cancer recovery and the relationship of occupation and lifespan. Third kind is the evaluation research. This kind of research aims to assess the effects, impacts, or outcomes of practices, policies, or programs. Examples are assessment of the implementation of nursing care in a hospital, determine the impact of a new treatment procedure for patients. The fourth kind of quantitative research is the survey research. It is used to gather information from groups of people by selecting and studying samples chosen from a population. It may be done in various ways like face-to-face, -face, phone, mail, and online. A survey research may be cross-sectional if the information is collected from a sample in just a single point in time. Its examples are child-rearing practices of single parent and population control practices of unmarried couples. A survey research is considered longitudinal if the researcher collects information on the same subjects over a period of time, sometimes lasting many years in order to study the changes through the years. Longitudinal survey is utilized, for example, to determine the growth of rice yield in the country and the rate of promotion of doctorate degree holders five years after earning the degree. The fifth kind of quantitative research is the causal comparative research. It is also known as ex post facto or after the fact research. This kind of research derives conclusion from observations and manifestations that already occurred in the past and now compared to some dependent variables. It discusses why and how a phenomenon occurs. An example of causal comparative research is 
Influence of Weight to Stress Coping Level of Adults. The subjects would be separated into different groups, like underweight, normal weight, overweight, and their stress coping levels measured. This is an ex post facto design because a pre-existing characteristic or weight in this instance was used to form the groups. The next kind is experimental research. This research utilizes scientific method to test cause and effect relationships under conditions controlled by the researcher. In this case, an effort is made to determine and impose control over all other variables except one. Groups A. Independent variable This is manipulated to determine the effects on the dependent variables. And the dependent variable is what is measured in an experiment. The researcher assesses how it responds to a change in an independent variable. Here are the examples of experimental research. Effect of a length of sleep to test scores. The independent variable is the length of sleep and the dependent variable is the test scores. How drinking diet soda, independent variable, affects the blood sugar level dependent variable effects of new teaching strategy to the achievement of the students the independent variable is the new teaching strategy and the dependent variable is the achievement of the students thank you for listening that ends our lesson one congratulations for making it this far Again, I'm Mom Rosalind de la Serna. Thank you again and may God bless us all. You, can, you may now proceed in accomplishing the activities related to this lesson. Good luck and please reach out to me if you have any queries or clarifications. Thank you.